Hello there, it's Richard McMahon here from the psychometric testing company howtobecome.com and in this tutorial I'm going to teach you how to pass an electrical comprehension test. So if you have an electrical comprehension or aptitude test coming up, please make sure you stick around and watch this fully from beginning to end because I'm going to give you an explanation of the kind of questions you will have to undertake. I will give you some sample questions and I will also get you to try some yourself live here on the video. Please also subscribe and don't forget to hit the like button because that tells me you enjoy the content and I will therefore spend more time creating it for you. Thank you very much. Okay, let's get into the training. So what are, first of all, electrical comprehension tests? Well, an electrical comprehension test is used to assess your competence in the use of different electrical concepts. Now the test is usually used as part of a wider psychometric testing assessment for different kind of roles that require, number one, practical engineering skills, and for example, roles within the Royal Air Force or the Armed Forces will require you to undertake an electrical test assessment. Number two, you may have to undertake an assessment as part of a process for joining electrical engineering roles and also electrical maintenance and servicing roles too. Now, the type of questions usually fall into the following three different categories, and we're going to look at these today. You have to analyse electrical circuit diagrams and answer questions related to those. You have to answer questions to identify different electrical symbols, and then also written test questions that are used to assess your knowledge of electrical concepts. So let's take a look at some sample questions before we move on to some questions that you can try under timed conditions. So here's a sample electrical comprehension test question. In the following circuit, if switch B closes and switch A remains open, what will happen? And then you are given multiple choice options. A, bulbs X and Y will illuminate. B, bulb X will illuminate only. C, bulbs Y and C will illuminate. Or D, no bulbs will illuminate. So it's saying in the following circuit, if switch B closes and switch A remains as it is, what will happen? So if we close switch B, we have that circuit now. Now, the only one that is true, i.e. it's connected, is that element there. OK, therefore, that means that bulbs X and Y only will illuminate because switch A remains open and therefore bulb Z cannot function correctly. And the important thing with these questions is to always think about the location of the battery, the power source, which is right there on the top. Always focus on that part because that is an integral aspect of answering these kind of questions. So we're going to look at more of those in a second and I'll get you to try some too. But let's have a look at the second type of electrical aptitude test question, electrical symbols identification. Now, of course, the only way that you can truly answer these is if you do know what the symbols are. But if you apply a little bit of common sense, and I'll show you how to do that as we progress, then you can sometimes whittle the answer options down to one or two. So this one is, what does the following symbol represent? And again, you are given multiple choice options. A, a fuse, B, a resistor, C, a locking switch, or D, a battery. Well, we've already seen what a battery is in the previous image, uh, the previous question, so we can get rid of the battery. And we know that the answer there is C, which is a locking switch. Now, an open switch, as this is here, prevents a current from flowing through the circuit. OK, so another question, which is written test questions that assess your knowledge of electrical concepts. Current is measured in what? Is it A, volts, B, amps, C, ohms, or D, watts? And the correct answer is B, amps. Now, the way to get proficient in these kind of questions is to practice lots of them, which is what we're going to do today. So let's start working through some of them. Again, I will give you some sample questions, explain how I have reached the answers, and then I'll get you to try some under time conditions. So let's go back to the analyzing electrical diagrammatic circuits. So here's a question. Question number one, in the following circuit, what happens if the switch remains open? And our answer options are A, bulbs A and B will illuminate, B, bulb B will illuminate only, C, bulb A will illuminate only, or D, no bulbs will illuminate. 
So the switch is remaining open, as is the case there. Now that means that bulb B cannot operate because the switch is open, therefore the circuit is not made. The only part that is made is that aspect there. So therefore bulb A will be the only one to illuminate the correct answer is C. And don't forget, you have to always look at the location of the battery. Don't forget that. That's very, very important. So look at the location of the switch, the location of the battery, and that will assist you in answering the questions. So now it's your turn to have a go. Please put your answer to question two in the comments section below the video, and we will come on and mark these every day for you. Now there is a timer on the right hand side. Once that gets down to the bottom, the time has run out to answer the question. So use it. If you do need more time, please don't be afraid to pause the video. It's important that you understand the question and get the answer correct. So question two. In the following circuit, if switch A closes and switch B remains open, what will happen? A. Bulbs X, Y and Z will illuminate. B. Bulb X will illuminate only. C. Bulbs Y and Z will illuminate only, or D, no bulbs will illuminate. Now, don't forget the location of the battery and the switches, and you have the time it takes the timer to go to the bottom to put your answer in the comments section below the video. Here we go. Brilliant. Well done. OK, let's now try another electrical comprehension test type question, but let's make it slightly harder this time. Question three, in the following circuit, with switch A open, which bulbs are illuminated, if any? A, bulbs X, Y and Z will illuminate. B, bulb Y will illuminate only. C, bulbs X and Z will illuminate. And D, no bulbs will illuminate. So the switch is remaining open there. OK, and that's the location of the battery. That means that bulb Y will not function because switch A is open. Therefore, the circuit is not made, whereas bulbs X and Z will illuminate because the circuit there is made with the location of the battery. So therefore, the correct answer is bulbs X and Z will illuminate only. Therefore, C is the correct answer. So now it's your turn to have another go. Please put your answer to question four in the comments section below the video for marking. So you have the time it takes the timer to go down. If switch B remains open, what will happen? So switch B remains open. A, bulbs X, Y and Z will illuminate. Bulb X will illuminate only. C, bulbs Y and C will illuminate. Or D, no bulbs will illuminate. Please put your answer in the comments section below the video. Here is the timer. OK, fantastic. Well done. I hope you're enjoying these. I want to work through a couple more of these diagrammatic ones before we move on to the other two. But don't forget, if you are enjoying it, please give the video a like. I would very much appreciate your support. Thank you. So try another one. Slightly harder. Please put your answer to question five in the comments section below the video for marking. Here we go. In the following electrical circuit, if switch A closes and switch B and C remain open, what's going to happen? A. Bulbs X, Y and Z will illuminate. B, bulb X will illuminate, C, bulbs Y and Z will illuminate only, and D, no bulbs will illuminate. And you have the time, it takes the timer to run down to answer the question. Put your answer in the comments section below the video. Here we go. OK, brilliant. And if you are answering these questions within the timer, you're doing a great job. You're making fantastic progress. So let's have a look at one that's slightly harder, a little bit different this time. In the following circuit, how many bulbs will illuminate if switch three closes? A, no bulbs. B, two bulbs. C, one bulb. D, four bulbs. So in the following circuit, how many bulbs will illuminate if switch three closes? So let's assume that's what happens. Switch three closes. But the answer is no bulbs. And the reason being because at the top there, 
Switch one has to close for anything to happen to make the circuit. Okay, it has to close to make the circuit. A lot of people would get that wrong. So what I want you to do is to have a go at a similar one to see whether you can work out exactly how many bulbs will illuminate. So please put your answer to question seven in the comments section below the video for marking. Now in the following circuit, the same circuit as before, how many bulbs will illuminate, but this time if switches one and five close. So one and five. Is it A, no bulbs, B, one bulb, C, two bulbs, D, four bulbs, E, five bulbs, or F, six bulbs? And you have the time it takes the timer to go down. To answer the question, put it in the comments section below. Make sure you double check your answer. Here we go. Okay, brilliant, well done. So let's now move on. I'll, I'll tell you we can get access to more of those diagrammatic ones as we work through the tutorial because they are really helpful and they are typical of the kind of questions that you will have to encounter. So let's have a look at some electrical symbols identification test questions. Here's an example one. What does the following symbol represent? Now most people would think no idea. Now the key to answering these is to look at the answer options and then use a process of elimination. A, a battery, B, a lamp, C, a resistor, or D, a circuit breaker. Now if I was using common sense, I would say that it's not a battery because we've already seen a battery, what it looks like within the diagrams. Could it be a lamp? Yes, it could. What about a resistor? It doesn't really look like a resistor. What about a circuit breaker? Yes, it looks like a circuit breaker. So you could automatically use a process of elimination and say it's unlikely to be A or C. And the correct answer is actually B. It is a lamp. OK, so now it's your turn to have a go. Please put your answer to question nine in the comments section below the video for marking as normal. Again, you have a timer. Which of the following symbols represents a speaker? Is it A, B, C or D? Now use some common sense and you should be able to work out which one it is. Here's the timer. Okay, great. Brilliant work. Well done. Try another one. Please put your answer to question 10 in the comments section below the video for marking. Here's a timer. Here we go. Which of the following symbols represents a heating element? So use a process of elimination to decide which one it is. A, B, C or D. And I bet you can automatically get rid of two of them straight away. So which of the following symbols represents a heating element? Here's a timer. Great stuff. And just try another one for good luck. Please put your answer to question 11 in the comments section below the video for marking. There's a timer. Which of the following symbols represents a variable resistor? A variable resistor, A, B, C, or D. And my tip for answering this is to look on the symbols and see which aspect of them looks to represent something that's variable. And that will allow you to probably get rid of a couple of answer options. Here's a timer. OK, outstanding work. Well done. Now let's move on to some electrical circuit um, charts. I want to quickly show you this. And if you want to study this more, just pause the video. But if you understand these different symbols, they will help you tremendously to pass any electrical comprehension test. So as I say, if you want to pause the video, this gives you a breakdown of, of different electronic circuit symbols. OK, so have a look at them. You can pause the video if you want to, because I'm going to move on to the next batch of questions. But this is a great thing to study and to learn. You don't have to know them inside out but when they do come up you'll be ah that's a transformer oh i know that's a voltmeter i know that's a wall light i know that's a switch i know it's a locking switch or even there a push button switch so do learn those it wouldn't take you long to familiarize yourself with them and i think it would be a really good 
uh, process to go through and it will help increase your scores significantly. So pause it if you want to and learn them. I'm going to now move on to the next questions. And that is written electrical comprehension test questions, a written format. These are a little bit harder, I believe. So question 12, which type of electrical device only allows current in one direction? A, electron, B, diode, C, battery, D, fuse. And the correct answer is actually diode. Now, the only way that you will get good at these is to practice lots of them because then, you know, there's only a, a specific number of questions that can be asked. So now it's your turn. Have a go at this. Please put your answer to question 13 in the comments section below the video. If we use some, apply some common sense here, you should be able to answer it. Here we go. What is covered on wires to guard the circuit's electrical supply and provide a safety precaution to people using them? A, insulator, B, inductor, C, resistor, or D, thermistor. Here we go. Okay, brilliant. And like I say, if you use a little bit of common sense, you should be able to answer these questions. Try another one. Please put your answer to question 14 in the comment section below the video for marking. Here we go. What does the DC stand for in the term DC electricity? Is it divided current, B, direct current, C, direct capacity, or D, diode current? Here's the timer. Brilliant. Well done. OK, now, if you click the link in the top right hand corner of the video, it takes you through to my website, howtobecome.com, and you can download my comprehensive electrical comprehension test questions and answers guide. It's a brilliant guide. You can download it in PDF format so you can have it within your inbox within two minutes from now. And you can practice loads and loads of these questions to help improve your scores. I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial. I love teaching you, but please don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the training videos we're uploading. Loads of you are passing your tests and your job interviews after using these videos, which is great to see. Don't forget to give the video a like because then that tells me you love the content and I will create more for you. But put your answers in the comments section below and we'll come on here each day and mark them for you. Thank you for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. And I wish you all the best for passing your electrical comprehension and aptitude test. Have a brilliant day. Thank you.